we will now continue with another very powerful algorithm random forest random forest are originally developed by Leo Bryman and the development was initiated by using Bagger in the earlier version, later assisted by Adler to perfect the random forest models. Random forests are essentially a large number of decision trees. That's why we call it as a forest of decision trees. Here we, in decision trees, we start with the start with a root node and recursively partition the attribute space starting from this node. All other nodes are exactly one incoming node. At every node, we split the example space into two or more subspaces. Now, a given attribute at a given node, which has the maximum information, is used for splitting. The nodes with no outgoing edges are the terminal leaf nodes, which are used to assign the class labels for the problem at hand. Let us ex explain the decision trees with simple iris problem. The iris flower has got three different varieties of setosa, virginica, versicolor. We take just two attributes. So we start with petal length for a given set of examples which belong to three different class, classes. We use a supervised learning algorithm, the decision tree, to classify the examples. Now, in this decision tree, petal length attribute has the most information at the root node. So it has been selected for splitting. This attribute, if its value of this is less than three, then it is classified as setosa because we have reached a leaf node here. If this petal length is greater than or equal to three for any given example, and the next attribute which is splitting this at this stage of the intermediate node is petal width. And if this is less than 1.8, then the given example is classified as versicolor. And if petal length is greater than or equal to three and petal width is greater than or equal to 1.8, it is classified as virginica. <laughs> Similarly, given a set of descriptors, we can <coughs> evolve a decision tree from the root node to the leaf nodes. And we can also, from those decision tree model, extract rules. For example, the rule here is if petal length is greater than or equal to three and petal width, width is less than 1.8, then the example is classified as vers versicular. Like that, we can devise multiple rules to classify the data depending upon the combination of the descriptors values it has. This is one example of the decision tree in which the descriptor one has the most information. That's why it is splitting the root node. Then Next is this descriptor three has got the most informative uh, nature at this intermediate level, and then finally descriptor two. So with this, we start from the root node to the leaf nodes. There are four different leaf nodes, and each of them, depending upon the number of examples of a given class coming to the leaf node, we can assign a class label which has maximum number of uh, examples in that leaf node. Now, random forest is a forest of decision trees, which is a collection of several decision trees. And every tree contributes to the classification or regression problem. 
Now, there are two different randomness introduced in random forest. The first randomness is in terms of bootstrap sampling with re replacement. As I told, the random forest consists of several decision tree models. In each decision tree model, the input data set is bootstrap sampled. If there are n examples, we sample n examples with the replacement. And this is known as bootstrap sampling. So every tree is built on its own specific bootstrap sampled data. The second randomness is at every node in each tree, only a subset of attributes are used for splitting the nodes. So this would guarantee that different trees would have would be quite dissimilar to each other, and then there will be some diversity. So for random forests, it's an ensemble of decision trees. So for an ensemble to max to give maximum performance, there should be a good diversity. So this uh, two randomness ensure that the decision trees in each of the trees in the random forest are as diverse as possible. So this is a cartoon of uh, decision trees. The first three uses uh, so <sighs> Stop. So we have in this D uh, three is uh, used to split the root node here D two and D one, and now because of the bootstrap sampling, there is a theorem which states if bootstrap sampling is done with a large number of examples. One third of the examples will not be used in a given tree. Every tree will have only two thirds of the example to model the set of bootstrap example, and one third of the examples will not be used. These unused examples are known as OOB examples. So instead of using a cross validation, Bryman originally contended. This unused examples themselves can be taken as a test set of examples for each decision tree. And then that can be used to tune the parameters and maximize performance. But normally people employ both out of bag performance as well as cross validation to evaluate the decision trees and to tune the parameters. As I said, Ryman contended that uh, the uh, OOB would provide an honest assessment of the reliability of the forest. So OOB error can again be used as an extra methodology for validating the random forest models. Yeah. So random forest also can be used to uh, estimate the importance of different attributes or descriptors. We'll come back to this when we come for the attribute selection in the next section. Yeah. So in random forest, the final model now is estimated by testing with unused examples in each of them. And then a certain number of trees will have not used certain examples. So each, so each tree will evaluate its performance with the unused OOB examples. And then every example would get certain votes for testing and maximum votes obtained by a particular class is assigned the class label for that example so random forest has got 
several advantages. The simple model with two major parameters. The major parameters are depth and the subset of attributes used in each node of the each tree. The subset size is kept constant. Suppose you've got a set of 100 attributes, we can vary the subset size used in a given node in a given tree. The second parameter is a depth. To what level the model can be taken down until the leaf node is obtained is another parameter. The third parameter is a, is a number of forests which normally we eliminate by taking large number of trees in a given model so that that need not be varied and tuned to maximize the performance. So it's a very simple model. It's very easy to parallelize. We can get variable importance from random forest model itself. As we said, there is no need for separate cross-validation because OOB can be used for cross-validation, but we recommend that both OOB and cross-validation methodologies can be used to tune the parameters. Provides excellent accuracies. Can also handle missing values. Outlier detection methods are possible by using random forest. We can use segmentation and then we can find out uh, several uh, uh, other uh, it has several other features including it can be used for unsupervised learning we will now move over to attribute selection now whether it is bioinformatics or chemoinformatics we extract several descriptors a compendium of descriptors in bioinformatics and protein function identification several thousands of descriptors are possible in gene expression profiles again a large number of genes expressing will be, can be used as expression profiles for input features in chemoinformatics again large amounts of large numbers of different types of descriptors which include one dimensional two dimensional and electronic physiochemical um, and different types of descriptors are possible so a company of, of descriptors will be there so which descriptors we can use, we can use both domain information and machine learning to <clears throat> reduce the number of descriptors and find out a subset of a small number of descriptors which correlate to the particular classification problem at hand. This is known as descriptor selection or attribute selection or feature selection. It is a very useful pre-processing methodology which is quite useful in reducing the data size, maximizing the performance, and also you can employ this to get valuable domain information like identification of biomarker genes. So a set of descriptors we have, and we can we have to identify those descriptors which do not correspond to the particular classification problem at hand and reduce noise from the data set and use a subset of attributes and that's it and this is useful not only to identify domain information but algorithm can be trained faster very easy to interpret accuracy is improved overfitting is reduced not only the training model is will perform well it will also perform well on unseen query examples and there are three major approaches out of which the first two major approaches are known as filter and wrapper approaches in the filter approach we use some heuristics to rank 
the attributes in the given data sets and then find out the subset of top ranked attributes and use that as a final feature set for building the classification model. Whereas the wrapper approach, we evaluate the data using a particular machine learning algorithm several different times to arrive at the final subset of attributes which correlate to the particular problem at hand. So the filter method does extract ranking information about the attributes. It doesn't need a repeated use of machine learning. It uses some heuristics, a priori, to rank the attributes. It's easy to implement, faster and scalable, but may not be very accurate. So certain methodologies like mutual information, Fisher score, correlation-based methods, chi-square methodology, information gain. These are some examples for filter methods. Whereas wrapper methods, uh, the conventional methods are forward, backward, and stepwise selection methodologies. We also can use evolutionary and stochastic and heuristic methodologies for finding out the most informative subset of attributes. So this cartoon tells how do we use the filter methods. We have five attributes here. We use an SVM classifier. The accuracy may be low. Employ a filter method, rank the attributes. The attributes are ranked as X1 is the top ranked attribute. X2 is the next highest ranked attribute and so on. And X5 is the lowest ranked attributes. What we do is we employ a classifier with all the attributes, find out the accuracy, then leave the least informative attribute, that is X5, and again run the classifier, use the cross validation accuracy to find out the performance. Again, we remove least ranked attributes X4 and X5, use only X1, X2, X3, and find out the accuracy, and so on, until only one attribute is left out. Now we have evaluated all possible subsets of the attribute set and the subset which gives you the highest accuracy, we'll use that in our further models. Here, the subset X1, X3, and X4 are found to be have the best possible accuracy. So we'll use that as our uh, subset of attributes for further modeling. So correlation filter is the, is the simplest possible methodology to rank the attributes. A simple PSL correlation is found out. If any two features are linearly correlated, both carry the same information, and then one of the attributes can be removed and it becomes because it is redundant. So if two descriptors are highly correlated, one of them has to be removed. Normally we do, we remove the attribute which has less variance. More the variance an attribute carries, more the um, classification capacity it has. So remove the attribute which are highly correlated, use a threshold for estimating the correlation value. Normally a value of 0.95 is used. If two attributes are highly correlated, remove the one which has the least variance. Mutual information is another very important filter methodology which ranks attributes a priori. It measures the dependency between the input and target variable. And higher the value of mutual information, higher the ranking. Information gain employs information gained by first it. It, it doesn't use the attribute for calculating the entropy and then it uses the attribute to calculate the entropy. The reduction of the entropy by using the attribute provides the information gain and this information gain can be employed as a ranking methodology for 
finding out the best subset of attributes which highly correlate with the particular classification problem at hand. Chi-square method for feature selection computes the chi-square stats between each non-negative feature and class, quantifies the lack of interdependence between a given feature and classification category. Higher the value of chi-square implies higher information given by the feature. Now let us come to the wrapper methodologies. In the <clears throat> wrapper methodologies, we there are several conventional methodologies: the forward selection, backward selection, and separate selection. We will describe forward and backward selections. In the forward selection, one attribute at a time is evaluated separately. Suppose we got five attributes. Attribute one only is used and a classifier like SPME is used to find out the accuracy. Then attribute two is used, then three is used as an input data, and then four and five are used. The attribute which has the maximum accuracy, here we find descriptor four has got the maximum accuracy. So this is now selected. Now this attribute along with all other attributes, one at a time, is added to this so x4 and x1 now we have two attributes with these two attributes the classifier is run the accuracy is found out x4 and x2 then x4 and x3 and x4 and x5 whichever couplet of descriptors give gives the best possible accuracy that is selected for the next stage so descriptor 4 and 1 have found to be have been found to be giving the best possible accuracy of 87.7 percent so these two are selected along with this one more attribute at a time is taken and three attribute subset is used different three attribute combinations are used to evaluate the performance and so on so when we add one by one we can find out that particular subset of attributes number of size of uh, attributes which use the maximum possible accuracy by graphically or by visual inspection we can find out and that subset is now used in further modeling in wrapper selection we also have a backward selection methodology in backward selection methodology we start with all the attributes and remove the least significant attribute at each duration which improves the performance of the model. So when we start with all the attributes and then evaluate the accuracy, we remove one attribute at a time and again evaluate the accuracy. When we remove one attribute at a time, we remove that attribute which results in least loss of accuracy or results in increase in accuracy. The accuracy can increase because that attribute, if that attribute does a noise noisy attribute then removal can cause increase in accuracy also so like that at every stage one attribute which has the least information is removed until we get only one attribute so after that that subset of attribute which gives us the maximum possible accuracy is now used for further modeling <sighs> SVM itself can be used for attribute selection. Now, this SVM recursive feature elimination is known as SVM RFE algorithm. The SVM RFE algorithm, let us explain it with five attributes. First, find, build the SVM linear hyperplane using all the five attributes. And then find out the hyperplane equation. When you find out the hyperplane equation, you also get the weights for each of the descriptors or attributes. Remove, find out the accuracy. Remove the attribute, which is whose absolute value is least. The weight value whose absolute magnitude is least means that contributes least to the hyperplane equation. So that attribute is removed and then after removal of that attribute the rest of the attributes 
SVM hyperplane equation is again built and then again remove that attribute which has least absolute value and so on until only one attribute is left out. After performing this set of experiments, we can find out that subset which maximizes the performance and be used for further modeling. So here we have um, five attributes. The sum, smallest absolute value is descriptor phi. So we first remove the descriptor phi and then we use the rest of the attributes. Again, build an SVM hyperplane equation. Again, find out the attribute value, attribute um, weight values of each of the attributes and then the weight value which has the smallest absolute value, value is now for descriptor one so descriptor one is removed and so on yeah. the third category of methods in conventional future selection methodologies are embedded methods embedded methods combine the qualities of the filter and wrapper methods these embedded methods are built in in certain certain classification methodologies now it has a deeper connection to learning algorithms and are part of the classification itself as we told embedded methods are less time consuming and less prone to overfitting we have lasso regression ridge regression or embedded methods for regression also we have for classification random forest as two important uh, feature selection methodologies built in that so embeds random forest embeds two important feature selection methodologies within itself let us try to understand that. these two methodologies are known as mean decreasing impurity in the original tree decision tree Gini impurity or information gain are used in the trees for node splitting at so at every node splitting the impurity of the uh, nodes decrease the impurity means if we have 10 examples and five each belong to one class in the top node this is highly impure because it doesn't carry any information for classification the next step if we have uh, out of 10 examples out of in a given node out of five examples three belong to class one and two belong to class two this is a little higher information and less impurity the next stage if four belong to class one and one belong to class two in a given node then it has much higher information and less impurity. And in the final leaf node, if, if one node, all the five examples belong to class one, and in the next leaf node, all the five examples belong to class two, then these two nodes contain the least impurity. So as we build the tree, the Gini impurity, the decrease in, in Gini impurity can be found out. The attribute, which has the highest importance, future importance, will have the highest decrease in mean impurity. So this mean impurity in each tree, the average of that can be found out for each of the tree and the grand total average for all the trees can be found out. And this mean decrease in mean impurity for a given future can be used to rank the attributes for establishing the future importance yeah similarly the other methodology is mean decrease in accuracy for every grown tree the ov examples and are counted after building that model and number of examples for the given class are counted that means this gives you the accuracy for each class now each attribute is permuted at one one time each and then after permutation the number of ob 
examples votes got for a particular class or uh, the correct class is again found out now if after permutation if there is no decrease that means that attribute doesn't contain information because the permutation disturbs the exact uh, data for a given example so permutation doesn't decrease the accuracy that attribute has no information the attribute which has got maximum decrease in accuracy in the overall grand average value in all the trees put together then this mean decrease in accuracy can be used as a future importance measure yeah. people also use one norm svm the svm we described in the earlier sections are normally two norm svm in one norm svm provides the weight information for all the attributes like two norm in svm but it gives you a sparse values of weights most of the weights which have no information correlate into the particular classification algorithm will have very near zero weights so these attributes can be removed after running one norm svm and then after that we can use two norm svm which is suggested by bapni principal component analysis also can be employed uh, and kernel principal component analysis can be employed for uh, reducing the dimensions of the original data set yeah we can also employ evolutionary algorithms for attribute selection there are several evolutionary algorithms which are used for future selection genetic algorithms can be used ant colony optimization can be used swarm based algorithms can also be used and black hole algorithm can be used and there are multiple newer methodologies which have come and then many of these heuristics and evolutionary and stochastic methodology can be employed for attribute selection these methods are easy to use and it doesn't require any der derivative information sampling a subset of solution near the global optimum that means you can get a subset of attributes which provides the near global values although there is no proof that evolutionary algorithms can give you the best possible uh, global optimal solutions the basic concept is uh, we have <coughs> set of descriptors so a given example uh, as five descriptors we can give one for a selected descriptor for a given example and zero for the descriptor which is not selected so in this example we have descriptor one descriptor four and five are selected these these selected descript descriptors can be uh sent to svm and the accuracy can be found out like that in genetic algorithm we start with a set of uh, examples with different selected descriptors subsets of selected descriptors and by using the principle of natural evolution it evolves the final subset of attributes which gives maximum possible accuracy yeah. so ga as i said mimics the principle of uh, natural selection it initially starts with a random population and it follows a selection crossover and mutation repeatedly for several generations and then finally comes to the best possible subset of attributes the selection methodology there are two different methods one is tournament selection and second is rule level selection and there are several crossover and mutation methodologies are available yeah so initially a population of trial solutions are started 
the coded form of trial solution the trial solutions are different subsets of attributes selected for a particular example from the data set as an example this uh, this example uses only descriptor 1 4 and 5 so like this this is one trial solution similarly several trial solutions can be generated GA starts with the set of trial solutions and then the trial solutions in the coded form is known as a chromosome. Now we have coded in terms of 0 and 1. So every chromosome is a trial solution. All the current generation members are known as parent members. Once we use the, the operations of selection, crossover and mutation, to get then the, the members of the next generation solution they are children and then fitness is assigned to an individual representing a measure of goodness here in future selection the fitness for a subset of for a given solution is the svm a random forest accuracy for that particular uh, solution or chromosome so selection is a filtering process by which examples are, are subsets in this case the subsets which have higher fitness and and so are selected so the the subset size the subsets which have higher fitness values means higher cross validation accuracies are more likely to be selected in the selection process and crossover generally takes two parents to produce two new solutions the new solutions thus produced in a given generation using several crossover method mm, several crossover between examples is proven to provide better offspring with better fitness it produces a subset of uh, attributes with with better class validation accuracy this is what means now mutation provides a random change in the value of a given subset of uh, attribute given by a given trial solution this without mutation we stop with selection and crossover you may end up in a local optimum to take it away from rapid convergence to a local minima mutation is used which is a random change in the value of a particular example The tournament selection, suppose we have got eight examples, we have to minimize error. Take any two examples randomly. The one which has the least error is selected. Again, three and four. The one which has the least error is selected like that in, in one cycle out of eight examples, four examples are selected. Again, in another cycle, we do select four more examples. So we start with eight examples, we end up with eight examples. But in this case, the, the example is the with the highest error will never be selected so examples with lesser errors are likely to be are with more fitness are likely to be selected more than once they may have more copies and then examples which have less fitness will have less copies in this way selection procedure is done the selected solutions are now i will not uh, explain this rule label selection the selected solutions are now then to the next operation which is known as crossover in this uh, in this crossover methodology what we have we have two solutions the solution one has uh, a subset for the subset is uh, attribute one attribute four and five the example the next example selected has got example one two and three as a subset four and five are not there these two are Uh, selected for crossover randomly one point is selected now here this junction is selected now once these are selected these two solutions and the point of crossover is selected after crossover we have we have a set of solutions the first new solution will have first part of the first solution and second part of the second solution the second new solution will have 
first part of the second solution and the second part of the first solution. So with this, we get two new solutions. The first new solution has got only first example selected and the second new solution has got all the five examples selected. In this way, crossover is done with the crossover probability and the set of children produced after crossover will have different subsets selected. These are again sent to the SVM or random forest for classification. And then in this way, more and more uh, generations are run with uh, repeating the process of selection crossover. And then after, sorry, after crossover, we do a mutation to, to uh, avoid uh, rapid convergence to a local minima. So our mutation, we have several mutation methodologies. The flip bit mutation is in this flip bit mutation in a given po population member, every bit is selected with a particular probability and the mutation probability is very small. If a bit is selected here, the second bit is selected. The bit is, if it has got value one, it is converted to zero. If it has got value zero, it is converted to one. In this way, for attribute selection, after selection, after mutation, this attribute is deselected. So originally we have got attribute one, two, four, and five are selected. Now we have got attribute one, uh, four, and five are selected. So in this way, all the examples are subject to the mutation operation. And then after a set of uh, mutation, um, after a set of selection crossover and mutation is done, one generation is over. Again, multiple generations are run until we get the maximum possible performance. And then there are several convergence criteria. And then using one of those criteria, we stop the uh, algorithm and find out the best subset of attributes which gives maximum possible accuracy measure yeah the next methodology is ant colony optimization ant colony is inspired by um, real life behavior of uh, uh, ants so the re certain types of ants leave a pheromone trail and then they also get attracted to the pheromone rich trail so this depositing pheromone and getting attracted to the pheromone rich trail now uh, is used by them as an indirect communication methodology to maximize their sojourn from uh, food source to the nest and back. So at home or uh, workplace, we drop a little bit of sugar. We see a highway of ants coming in and then this is mainly due to the pheromone deposition and then getting attracted to the pheromone rich trail so this methodology can be used for solving several optimization problems people used obstacles in their path they again found out they get uh, to a new steady state, which is the minimum uh, minimum uh, uh, the optimal route from the nest to the food source and back. Yeah. So this methodology can be again used for attribute selection. So. Mm. So every ant selects a subset of attributes from starting with one attribute at a time and then moving to one attribute to another attribute and then uh, some random amount of pheromones are deposited on all links between the attributes. It, it starts with the descriptor at random, decides probabilistically, and then will do exploration and exploitation. If exploitation is selected, it will move to the descriptor, which has the maximum pheromone on the link. Initially, some pheromone is deposited randomly. And if exploration is selected, it moves probabilistically 
with a probability proportional to the pheromone towards one of the descriptors with exploration exploitation and moves from one descriptor to another until the desired subset of attributes are obtained in this way several ants conduct their separate tours the subset selected by each ant is provided to the svm for classification to find the fitness this completes one generation the subset selected is best ant the 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 links of that subset are uh, the pheromones are added in those links and pheromones are reduced in all other links this way better and best better subset of subsets of uh, attributes are found out this is this is repeated for all for a large number of iterations until we get a convergence and we finally we find, find out the best possible subset of uh, attributes I think I will stop with this, and then, um, as uh, if we have if we have time, I will come back and explain a little more on this. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah.